Let's begin our journey in appreciating, falling in love, and being consistent companions and followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Notice that word I used, companions. You will say, Brother Yahya, we don't live in his time. We haven't met him physically or personally. We haven't heard his beautiful voice recite to us the Quran, and we haven't been engaged with the beauty of sight, of looking upon his physical presence. But I want you to know that you can be a companion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on account of the love that you have and devotion that you show towards his way and path and tradition. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to yearn for your company. And you and I must yearn in return, seeking his company in the next life, insha'Allah. In an authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ speaks about those who he loves, his ahbab, those who are loving of him and he is loving of them. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, who are his companions, his contemporaries, those who saw him, held him, witnessed him, lived with him, ate with him, drank with him, had the honor of serving him sallallahu alayhi wasallam, defending him with their own lives and their wealth and their property. They said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, these people that you yearn for, that you speak about, are we alasna ahba? Are we not them? He said, Antum ashabi, you are the honored and privileged to accompany me. You are my companions and my conte contemporaries and friends. Ahbabi alladhina yu'minuna bi wa lam yarawni. Those who I have this special love for, this connection with, who seek me and love me although they have not witnessed me, seen me, heard from me directly, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore the Sahaba at times, they used to speak of us later generations in awe of our love and devotion for the Prophet sallallahu and in his returned love to us. I want you to know that the love that you have for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam must stem from a true place in the heart, must come from a depth and a deep rooted honor and significance that you have for his elevated status entitled and given to him by Allah, but also because of who he is, what he represented, and the truth that he carried forward to humanity on behalf of being a witness unto God and one who is commanded to deliver a message that is not from his own volition, his own heart, his own mind and words, but that is a scripture brought down from above, an inspiration and a wahi. To speak of the Prophet ﷺ is to speak about the connection to the divine. It is the way towards Allah is only through the prophets and messengers of God. And for us as Muslims, we understand some of the verses that are found in the Bible, in the Torah, to mean that very same thing. You'll find a lot of people who have a devotion to the path of Jesus and, and uh, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, they will often quote a verse in the Bible where they say, and they use it in our opinion as Muslims falsely, where they say that Jesus said that he is the way and the path and the, the, that leads to God. And we agree with that. We don't take it that he therefore is deifying himself or claiming to be divine, but we say the exact same thing about Moses and Abraham and Muhammad, that the only way to approach God, the only way to knock on that door of, of divine uh, acquaintance is through the one who can lead you to as sirat al-mustaqim, that straight path. And therefore, in the very early chapter of the Qur'an, the chapter that is referred to by Allah as the opening, the beginning, the first step, the in, 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 in inauguration, is Surah Al-Fatiha, Umm Al-Kitab. It is the chapter that summarizes everything else that's going to be in the scripture and in the book. When you look into that chapter, the very first dua, the very first invocation, supplication, and prayer we're asked to make to Allah is we say, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Our Lord, guide all of us to the straight path. Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim. What path is it? The path of those whom you favored before us. O oh Allah, let me walk upon the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of Isa who preceded him, of Musa, Moses who came before him, of Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq, of Yaqub and Ayyub and Yusuf and 
all of the messengers and prophets who came before the Prophet are a part and parcel of the pathway and the way to Allah. The completion of them, the seal of messengerhood, Khatam al Nabiyeen, the finality of prophethood, the best and final brick that completes the structure of scriptural uh, inspiration to humanity so that the whole structure of humanity can turn its true attention and focus to Allah as it should be is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we proceed from this very in, in initial module about learning how to love him, why we love him, what it means to love him as a way of loving Allah, as a way of qurba and nearness to Allah, as a way of self-improvement, self-development, uh, self-awareness, self-confrontation, self-examination of looking into our life, we begin to gain a greater appreciation of who he is, why he was sent, and why his message is timeless. And as we continue throughout our discussions, insha'Allah, from the physical characteristics of the Prophet wasallam to the spiritual characteristics, to the ethical morality that the Prophet wasallam was sent with, you will come to appreciate that he was a rajulul kamil, the complete human being. This is part of Arabic folklore where they would speak about somebody who completes their humanity. See, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's referred to, uh, uh, to uh, by us as Sayyidul Khalq, the master, the completion of human experience. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has what is referred to as a shama'il, the comprehensive characteristics. See, when you say something is shamil, means something co covers everything. So when we actually write the biography of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we refer to it as a shama'il, means that the Prophet in every chapter of human experience exceeded what other people and other human beings exceeded before him, in how he smiled, in how he dressed, in how he smelled, in how he walked, in how he talked, in how he behaved, in how he was angry for what was right and how he was lenient and merciful in justice, in how he represented himself in all of his conditions. We study each and every aspect of his life in what he did, but also what he didn't do. One of the great mysteries of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is that the Sahaba didn't just look, did he do this, did he do this, and he did this, but they also made note of the things that he omitted or the things that he sidestepped, even though he did not prohibit them. Because everything in his life وسلم, was one of examination, one of revelation, and one of human benefit in our experience if it was given down and sent to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will learn to separate from the normal human behaviors of the Prophet ﷺ from those that are scripturally ordained. And we will learn some of the reasons why the Prophet ﷺ commanded so much respect in his idolatrous society before Islam came to him and how even though they may have rejected his claim to be a prophet initially, that they could not fault him in his ethics, morality, and uprightness as a human being. You becoming a good Muslim means you becoming a more complete follower of the Prophet ﷺ. And the more you adhere to his tradition, to his path, to his modality of life, to his sunnah, the more your humanity becomes more complete. See, whenever we speak about a person regressing away from their humanity, we give them a characteristic of one who has become animalistic, like a person who's become a rabid, uh, individual, somebody who has lost their mind, we characterize them as being someone like a donkey. You know, someone, you know, we have these characters, they're ferocious, uh, they're, uh, they're like a per, and even in some of the, the languages where people deride and curse and swear at each other, they curse people by the names of animals. So a person will be referred to as a dog or a, a donkey or an imbecile. All of that is because their humanity is taken away. Our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's whole message and purpose was to return to us our humanity. And as we proceed through the Prophet's smile, we gain love for who he was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what it is that we are to take upon in our person. I hope inshallah as we maintain the journey and the course that you will be engaged and taking on 
the inevitable desire and need of putting on in my life and your life certain characteristics that are missing at the moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our status by our elevation of his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our life. Remember the words of the Prophet sallallahu No one humbles themselves to Allah, meaning no one follows the tradition of the Prophet sallallahu of humility, of self-sacrifice, of self-confrontation, and holding oneself accountable before God, except that they will be ennobled and honored and enabled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us followers of the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.